The former deputy accused of shooting and killing a young man who was suffering a mental health crisis is now standing trial. Good afternoon. I'm Kim Christensen. And I'm Jennifer Meckles. Opening arguments began in the case against Andrew Bune, facing charges for second-degree murder after an emergency call ended with the death of Christian Glass back in June of 2022. Crime and justice reporter Kelly Rinke joins us live from Georgetown tonight and here to walk us through the opening statements. Kelly. Yeah, the district attorney walked the jurors through the whole 90 minutes. They said 22 year old Christian Glass had called 911 for help after his car got stuck and appeared to be in a mental health crisis. But the defense team is casting doubt on that theory, even suggesting that Glass was driving under the influence. Prosecutors say that Glass didn't get out of his car because he was scared. Within minutes of arriving, officers have him at gunpoint. Glass admitted he had weapons like a knife in the car, and the prosecution said he wasn't threatening anybody. The defense says there won't be testimony to say this was a mental health episode. The attorney instead emphasized the weapons and the drug paraphernalia in the car and suggested Glass was high on drugs. Andrew Buen shot a frightened, scared Christian Glass while he was in his car not harming anyone. Do not lose sight of the crimes that he committed. Chief Williams was attempting to use non-lethal force to unlock or to open a door when faced with a knife, which is a deadly threat. And my client's job was to be lethal cover. And he did that. And Chief Williams' decision to approach that door with the open window while Christian is wielding a knife around left him no choice but to fire a weapon. The dispatcher who took that 911 call is taking the stand this afternoon. Glass's mom is expected to testify on Monday. In Clear Creek, I'm Kelly Rinke, 9 News. Kelly, there were a lot of first responders out on that scene that night. Do you expect to hear from any of them throughout this trial? Yeah, we actually got a copy of the witness endorse list and on the defense's motion, they do expect to call Kyle Gould to the stand. He was the other deputy in this case who also faced charges. He had pleaded guilty. He wasn't on scene, but he was the deputy that was live streaming. This incident and gave the order uh, for for those responders to break open uh, the window. So he's on that list for the endorse list. So we'll see if he actually takes the stand. OK, Kelly Rinke reporting for us tonight in Georgetown. Thank you, Kelly. So we had to wait a little longer to get to 70 this year, but 80 could be right around the corner. We almost got there today, felt just a little bit short. Kathy, sometimes you just make that jump. I know it's worth mm -hmm. the wait though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was talking with Jenny about this earlier in the week. I mean, we were talking about 80 degrees being possible this week, and it definitely looks likely, if not today and tomorrow, Sunday for sure. And then we're going to have some big changes next week, you guys. So you know how April's our second snowiest month on average. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's talk about Friday. It's beautiful. It's sunny. We got blue skies. Look at the mountain. Ooh, look at the mountain traffic. <laughs> okay, it's great up there if you can get up there. No weather issues. Uh, look ahead. We've got a warm, dry weekend to look forward to. 80 degrees by Sunday, but that also means elevated fire danger. Temperatures today above the average of 61. We're 81 in Lamar, 81 in Springfield, 75 in Denver, 78 in Greeley. Tracking wind, which is not overly uh, gusty at this point, but will be shifting out of the southwest. And will become a feature heading into Saturday, not like last Saturday, but enough wind, warmth, lack of moisture. We've got a red flag warning out for southeastern Colorado through tomorrow. This may be extended northward into Denver and across the northeastern plains on Saturday. We're also tracking maybe a couple of isolated sprinkles with some fast moving showers coming off the foothills tonight. I don't think they're going to hold together, but maybe you'll get one or two raindrops on the windshield. Otherwise, plan that outdoor barbecue or patio adventure tonight. We're in the mid 70s now. We'll stay close to 70 degrees coming up by 8 o'clock. I'll have your weekend forecast in detail in just a bit. All right, Kathy, thanks. Twelve and a half years behind bars. That's the sentence for a man who repeatedly assaulted special needs students on a Fort Collins school bus. Most of the victims were unable to report to anybody what was happening to them. The former Pooter School District employee appeared before a judge and his victim's parents this morning. Investigative reporter Kevin Vaughn was in the court today. He joins us now in the newsroom. Did this man know that the bus had cameras on it, Kevin? Jenny, according to prosecutors, Tyler Zanella thought the security cameras on the bus were disconnected. They weren't. He sat in silence as others spoke of his actions. That what he did was intentional, mean-spirited, cruel, and just plain sadistic. 
the youngest five, the oldest ten. And it was twisted beyond any words I've ever learned. Eleven kids with special needs, most of them with autism, several nonverbal. Today, the ongoing nature of it is absolutely horrific. Physically abused on their school bus by the very adult who was there to keep them safe. Assaults captured by a surveillance camera. Tyler Zanella faced the final reckoning for the attacks during a hearing that featured emotional testimony from the parents of his victims. He sought out children he knew couldn't even articulate, look dad, look what he's doing right now. He's hurting us. Help me. Help my friends. And disgust from a prosecutor. Tyler Zanella, whose sole job it was to keep children <coughs> safe on the bus, instead repeatedly hit, flicked, smacked, kicked, tripped, cursed at, pinched, taunted, kneed, pulled the hair of, shoved, and punched 11 children. Asked if he wanted to say anything, Zanella took a pass. No, yeah. To be clear, justice will not be served today. So everyone is aware. There's no such thing as justice in a situation like this. And I don't say this lightly, but what Mr. Zanella deserves this court is not permitted to impose. What the judge could do was give him the maximum, 12 and a half years behind bars. If he stays out of trouble, he could be out in about seven. Some parents were unhappy with the plea deal that prosecutors agreed to. Under it, Zanella pleaded guilty to the most serious charge for each of the 11 victims. That was seven counts of third degree assault, two counts of child abuse, and two counts of harassment. In the newsroom, I'm Kevin Vaughn, Nine News. Kevin, thank you. Today, hundreds of people gathered at the Capitol building for the 2024 Colorado March for Life. Before the march began, people rallied on the Capitol steps, calling for pro-life protections for both women and babies in the state. Pro-Life Colorado helped organize this event that featured speakers from local and state leadership as well. Police were present. There were no reports of disruptive behavior. As people rallied and marched, organizers for an initiative that could protect abortion rights in Colorado say they have cleared a hurdle. Coloradans for Protecting Reproductive Freedom say they have collected enough voter signatures to get the petition on the ballot. The proposal would, proposition rather, would enshrine the right to an abortion in the state constitution if voters give their approval this November. The Secretary of State's office still does need to verify the signatures and says it has not received the petition yet. They need more than 124,000 signatures. Organizers say they got more than 225,000. The man charged in Colorado's largest casino heist ever will spend four and a half years in prison. A judge handed down that sentence today for Juan Gutierrez Zambrano. Back in March, he pleaded guilty to criminal mischief and he got two felony theft charges dropped. Investigators say his partner in crime, Sabrina Eddy, was a cashier at Monarch Casino in Blackhawk and stole $500,000 from the vault, then brought that money to Gutierrez Zambrano in a parking lot in Lakewood. Eddie's trial is set to start in May. Heads up for anyone planning on taking the A-line tomorrow. RTD is closing a section of the train to the plane between the Central Park and Denver Airport stations. The closure runs from 2.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night. RTD is running shuttle buses to replace that stretch of the A-line. People should plan, though, for extra time for shuttle transfers to and from the airport. This afternoon, the CU community is remembering a former football player. Today, the Buffs shared that Keith Miller died. He is currently playing and attending Texas A&M University Commerce. That university said he died in his apartment near the campus last night. He played for CU as a wide receiver for two seasons in 2020 and 2021. CU released a statement saying he was a member of our football program for two seasons and in every way imaginable was an outstanding young man in addition to being a beloved father, son and brother. He will always be a part of the Buffs family and he was taken from us too soon.